So today we're at Arcadoro with Philippe Blanc of Domaine Paul Blanc and uh, you've come all the way from Alsace to meet uh, people in Dallas. Yeah. So perhaps I could start by asking you how long has your family been in the winemaking business? Uh, winemaking business probably in the early 80s, 19th century uh, because the first bottling process was at that period but in the wine grower business since uh, 1610. But it's not a big merit in Alsace. Everybody is a wine grower since 1610, you know. <laughs> right. Nothing special. That makes us. you a fairly recent entrant then, I suppose, about in Alsatian terms. Oh, you know, it's a 19th or 20th generation, but it's fun to see that uh, every generation could live from this, and this is a real culture. Yes, yes. Tell me about the grapes that you grow and what, do, what does well in Alsace. In Alsace, we have uh, first uh, thing, we are not really French. We have been probably more European than French. We have been freed by most of the European countries, so we feel very European. But we had the influence of these guys also. So we have uh, seven grape varieties that comes from all over around Europe. Even the Muscat that come from Persia in the 12th century. So Alsace is a really cornucopia of a diverse cultural influence of every grape variety coming from a different place. That's fun. So we have a Riesling from uh, Germany, Rhine River area. We have a Pinot Grigio, that Pinot Gris that comes from Burgundy. We have a, a Traminer that comes from northern Italy with a recreation of a Gewurz Traminer. That's a spicier variety. We have a, a, a Pinot Noir from Burgundy. We have Silvana from Transylvania. Musca from Persia, so you see everything is really a little bit with his influence, but mainly a Riesling and Gewürztraminer. Mean, this is our power points in Alsace. And how would a Riesling from our, from Alsace taste different from one from, say, Germany? Well, it's a little bit like if you ask what's the difference between a Côte Roti and a Gigondas. So you see, climatically, it's a little different. Alsace is a southern part of uh, the Rhine River region, so the wine has a little more body, a little more weight than the northern part of Germany. Well, okay, and you also have, as you said, you have Pinot Gris. Is that the same grape as Pinot Grigio? Yes. And how would the taste differ from, say, a, an Italian Pinot Grigio? Oh, that's good too. It's a great question because it's connected with food. In Alsace, we have a certain consistency in food, so the wine is also a certain consistency. And to get this consistency, you reduce the yield, and you get also some minerals from the soil. So the taste is different because they have too much with the food. So a foie gras doesn't work with a Pinot Grigio, but works with a Pinot Gris. And what, what would you serve, for example, with uh, Riesling? From the uh, Alsace. You mean for food? For, yes, for food. is uh, yeah. what the Chinese energy called uh, the wood energy. So we like f spring food. Everything that has this, uh, uh, this energy that comes like the sap in the spring, you know. So, like, so for example, greens, asparagus, uh, fresh fish. Everything that has a little really fresh, t fresh, fresh taste. Okay. And uh, what about, say, Pinot Gris? Pinot Gris is a fall season. Pinot Gris has a, sometimes a taste of the forest, has a taste of, uh, of this wonderful porcini. You have also this beautiful uh, little touch, what we call in French champignon, noble champignon. So everything that is uh, cooked in the oven, having a, a little fat taste, like uh, for, because it's a little colder in, in Alsace at that time. And we have a lot of game, a lot of wild meat that comes over at that point. And uh, we love this when everything that is a little oven cooked. Yeah. You also have some very sweet dessert wines you, uh, made from, from, from the same grapes. What would you serve those with? With my best friends, actually. <laughs> and uh, with food, it's pairing well, but it's better to drink it a little before or after because this wine has a, has a great uh, density and texture. So the pairing is always a little different. It's like when you have an opera diva to pair with uh, something. It doesn't work the same. It's not easy to cook. But this kind of wine also needs to be related also uh, to when we cook desserts in Alsace, it's always a, a pie. You have a fruit pie, like yeah. apple pie, prune, etc. A little later in the time, we have a, a wild rose hip. And this wild rose hip goes well, for example, with a um, a cream of, of uh, chestnut. So this works incredibly well with this kind of... Uh, so I would recommend this fruit from the season in the fall to pair with this kind of wine, you see. And Giverstramina late harvest is incredible with the exotic fruit salad.
yeah. and blue cheese because most of the people underrate this potential of uh, these sweet wines to pair with an opposite like blue cheese it's just dramatic yes yeah. and, and the king of the king is a Riesling uh, SGN or late harvest where you get uh, an incredible option because you have a citrus note you have an exotic note and also you have this incredible uh, complex taste like a, like a great wines from uh, from Bordeaux like the Sauternes so it's amazing right and one, 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 one final question uh, how does the two, 2013 uh, harvest coming along and what does the vintage look like oh it's nice because um, actually our team is finishing today so right. they're probably in the celebration now <laughs> popping up a few selection de grano a few late harvest and we're finishing the, the harvest today with the first centum give us and um, probably we keep a little a little thing left for the selection de grano we harvest just a little bit before snow and I like the last days of harvest because I'm born the last day of harvest, 59, so it's fun to yeah, a little celebration time. That's good. So you think this this will be a good a good year for the for Alsatian wines? I have to explain what I said uh, today also to uh, to a club of uh, to the Sommelier Association. What you have to know in Alsace, like probably in most other re like most other the region or the wine is good, or the grape is ripe, or we don't make it. You know, yeah. We have so much competition all over the cro across the planet, but if you don't make a wine from gra from ripe grape, you don't exist anymore. Yeah. So now, due to the pressure of the consumption, and uh, you get really ripe grape every year. So what is changing is uh, cold vintage, having a high level of acidity, or warm vintage, having a little more level of concentration, lower acidity, so we go definitely to a cold vintage. So with a very crisp and very fine acidity. Yes. Okay. So 2013, like every B60 year, is always a little complicated, but it's fun. Good so far. Philippe, thank you very much for your time today. My pleasure.